By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match of Unsleeved Revised. So this is something that I do every now and then. I play against my brother. We take our old and beaten up revised cards and we make decks with them. So today my brother has made a deck that I've called Mono Black Shades. And uh, I'm bringing a deck to the table that I've called Green White Heroes. Because it's kind of this deck full of good guys, you know. And of course some green, big, beefy creatures. In a moment I'll go to the deck deck and I'll, uh, I'll talk you through the decks and what my strategy is. Before I do that though, I would first like to mention that if you want to skip that, as always, you can check out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, that will take you straight to the games themselves. And if you enjoy watching these unsleeved revised battles, I actually have a playlist that I think is just called Unsleeved Revised Battles. I'll put a link in the description below as well if you want to see more action, more Unsleeved Revised action. Okay, um, so now let's just jump into the deck deck, shall we? We're gonna look at the deck of my brother first, Mono Black Shades. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Yoop. So this is Black Shades. He's actually called it from the binder because these are cards that have always been in his binder. Although that's what he says. When I'm looking at the state of some of these cards, I don't think they've been in your binder, Yoop. Maybe somewhere in, in a stag in a corner or in a shoebox. Probably a shoebox. Anyway, um, looking at the deck, it is pretty strong for this format, actually. I mean, the Juggernauts are going to be really tough because I'm playing with Wall of Swords, Wall of Brambles. Remember, Juggernaut, a 5-3 creature that cannot be blocked by walls. So this could be a problem for me. You're playing with a full playset of Terrors. So you can terrorize all my big, beefy green creatures. I'm playing with War Mammoth and Crawl Worms. You can kill those. I'm seeing a Pestilence in combination with some Regeneration creatures. I mean, this is looking pretty, pretty strong. They're actually a rare, a couple of rares, I wanted to say, but I think there's one rare in here. Or is Dancing Scimitar also a rare? I think it's an uncommon. Anyway, um, the rare here, the elephant rare in the room is, of course, Nightmare, uh, which is huge. One black and five, and it's got power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps in the game, and he's playing mono black. So that could be very, very scary, especially when he can uh, put a fear onto the nightmare it's basically unblockable for me uh yeah that's gonna be a problem another card that i'm a little bit afraid of is frozen shade so frozen shade is a card you don't see that often one black and two to cast and for one black you can give it a plus one plus one but i think it's really good for obvious reasons this is a mono black deck so he can make a huge frozen shade you know so that could be kind of problematic for me hopefully then i'll have like a wall of brambles because that's a wall of regeneration and i can just stop his frozen shade um, I think overall this is looking like a really solid deck. I even see a couple of combos in this deck, right? For example, we've got um, the uh, the Soul Net in combination with Pestilence. That's pretty good. We've got Pestilence in combination with Scavenging Ghoul. That's pretty good. Um, you know, you've got the Drain Life situation going on with the Dark Rituals. That's pretty good. We've got Dark Ritual Hippie potentially turn one. So this is this is scary stuff, you. This is a serious deck you're bringing to the table. Let's see what my uh, what my heroes deck looks like. And here we see my heroes deck. So of course I'm playing with four Manalish hero, but also with Samite healer, kind of the white protocol sorcerer, right? It cannot deal damage, but you can tap it to prevent one damage. So it's kind of the opposite of the Prodigal Sorcerer, of the Tim. And then uh, I'm also playing, of course, with the green side of the deck. That's a little bit more beefy, right? I've got War Mammoths, one uh, green and three to cast for a 3-3 three, three Trampler. And that's really good with my Giant Groves because I can make mini forces of nature. So I've got four Giant Groves in here. So then I can attack and have a 6-6 six, six Trampler. Uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm also playing with uh, two Craw Worms. They're like this. They really take me back to uh, to my childhood when I was a boy. You know, I mean, these were the cards everybody loved and everybody wanted to have and wanted to play with. And they were super accessible because they're just common. So they're 6-4 for 6 mana, which is really decent stats. I'm also playing with Clockwork Beast. Now, Clockwork Beast, 6 mana for a 7-4 creature. And it's actually an 0-4 creature, but it comes into play with 7 plus 1 plus 0 counters on it. So it's a 7-4. And every time you block or attack, you take a counter off, right? And then you can recharge it again like most of these clockwork uh, uh, creatures i guess by tapping it down and paying so such and such an amount of mana and then 
uh, you know, the counters come back up. It's um, it's an interesting creature. It's uh, it's fun. I hope that I can maybe swing in with it a couple of times, and with a giant growth on it, I can potentially deal ten damage in one swing. That would be awesome. Now, I'm also playing with Regeneration. I think Regeneration is going to be really good in this matchup. One green and one, especially since my opponent is playing with Pestilence. So one green and one for an Enchant Creature. Beautiful art by Quentin Hoover. And for one green, I can then regenerate my creature. So I think that's pretty good. I'm also playing with two Streams of Life. I think, again, they can be useful when my opponent is trying to, you know, raise me with Pestilence. I can just say, okay, you know what? I'm going to gain tons of life. And that kind of makes Pestilence more bad. Pestilence is specifically good when you're ahead on life and not when you're behind. Um, what else is there? Disenchant. So they're going to be really useful against those Juggernauts. Unfortunately, I only have two of those. So uh, that's going to be kind of tough. I'm also looking forward to use my Rod of Ruin. So Rod of Ruin is going to allow me to kill the one toughness creatures in the deck uh, of my opponent. And there are quite a few one toughness creatures in his deck. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Maybe that can be quite annoying when he has a Frozen Shade on the table and kind of taps out and forgets about... My Rod of Ruin, I can kill the Frozen Shade. I don't think he's going to forget about it, though. He's, like, too good of a player. But maybe, who knows? You know, maybe I can distract him. Give him give him some extra beer or something, and he'll forget about the, the, uh, the Rod of Ruin on the table. But then I first have to have it on the table, of course. I only have one Rod of Ruin in the whole deck. There are 63 cards in this deck, by the way, so a little bit more than 60. It's always hard to select when you've got so many cool cards. I also have this Thicket Basilisk, which is kind of this... Secret Weapon, Thicket Basilisk with Regeneration. I think that could do a lot of harm in this matchup as well. Okay, so this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of my opponent. I, th I think we're in for some close matches. It could be a lot of fun. Let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. So I'm sitting on the right side and my brother is sitting on the left side. There's my hand. Ooh, I've got Clockwork Beast. Ooh, yeah. Oh, and a Rod of Ruin. Pretty slow hand. But I'm looking forward to it. Okay, a little bit of a glitch there on the line. And I look at my, my playmat so filthy. This is the playmat that my brother keeps in his LGS. We're playing in the LGS. Oh, there we see the hand. Oh, that is terrifyingly bad. Did I see a soul net, a dark ritual in swamps? Is, that, is he he's keeping it? Wow. I guess he's just really hoping to maybe find a frozen shade or something. There I play a Samite Healer, so a 1-1 creature I can tap to prevent 1 damage to any target. I guess I'm going to attack with it right now. So the first point of damage is for me with a follow-up play though. No changing my mind. Not playing anything. There's the third Swamp by Yoop. He's not doing anything either, so he's really giving me some time here because I've got quite a slow start, but that doesn't matter. Remember that opening hand. Ooh, missing a land drop here. Three, there is a Frozen Shade. Oh, that is annoying. Frozen Shade, zero one creature, but for one black, you can give it plus one, plus one. Tapping four mana here for, oh yeah, there's, oh no, not the Rod of Ruin, because I had a Rod of Ruin in my opening hand, but there's a Wall of Swords instead. So it's a really good card in this matchup. Three, five, Flyer, and uh, it is a wall, so it cannot attack, but it's a really good blocker, I guess, for the Frozen Shade. Although, I mean, he can pump it up to five. He can actually kill my wall. Oh, I'm letting it go through. He's playing into Dark Ritual. Ooh. Oh, no, I am blocking it on the wall. Okay. The wall is a goner, though. I feel like he didn't really need the Dark Ritual, though. Playing a Soul Net as well. I think he could have played that a little bit different. Maybe I'm wrong. Because he had five Swamps open, so he could have just pumped it big enough. But then, of course, I could have used the Samite Healer to save it. So it does make sense. It does make sense what he's done. Anyway, I've just played the Rod of Ruin here. Ooh, weakness. So that means my Samite Healer is going to die. That is bad news. Look at me throwing away the weakness. Not happy with this. And now he can attack me with the Frozen Shade. It's looking pretty bad for me. He's going to pump it with two. So he's going to deal two points of damage. going to drop to 18. He knows I've got the Rod of Ruin. Finally finding a green source. Hopefully now I can play something. There is a War Mammoth, a 3-3 three, three Trampler. I mean, it's not going to help me against the Frozen Shade, but at least it's something. Let's see what my brother can find. I mean, to be fair, he had a horrible opener in uh, his hand, you know, Dark Ritual and Swamps, but at least he now has that one Frozen Shade. 
And he can deal tons and tons of damage with just that one Frozen Shade. Look at this, four points of damage. And of course, he's keep, keeping enough mana open against the Rod of Ruin. The only plus side for me here is that he's open, so I can attack, I guess, with the War Mammoth. And okay, playing another one, so I can attack with one and keep one on blocking duty. I could, of course, also choose to keep both of them, but then he can trade two War Mammoths for one Frozen Shade. And actually, he doesn't even have to do two trade. He's got enough swamps to make it big enough so that it wouldn't die. So it makes no sense for me to keep a War Mammoth at bay. There's the attack, chump blocking it on the War Mammoth. That makes sense. Can he make a follow-up play? He can take a life from the Soul Net, so he's going to go back up to 17. Oof. This is tough, you know. It's just one life, but every time he gains a life, I'm, I'm getting further and further behind. I wonder what I can do here. Tapping six. Are we going to see a Craw Worm? Ooh, Craw Worm. That's so cool. So six for Powerhouse, deciding not to attack here with the War Mammoth. So probably keeping the War Mammoth to jump block here so I can attack with the Crawl Worm next turn. Look at the amount of swamps on the side of my opponent here. Nine swamps, so he can deal nine damage if I let it go. And that's just too risky for me to do. Remember, he's also playing with Drain Lives in his deck. Gaining a life, of course, from the Soul Net again. Going to 18, losing another creature. The only... Oh, I wanted to say the only silver lining here is that he's not playing anything else, but now he is. Finding the Juggernaut, a 5-3. This is bad news. Do I have at least a disenchant to deal with the Juggernaut? This is so tough. I'm on 13. As long as I can keep playing creatures, it's kind of okay, I guess. So here I am playing a War Mammoth again. So the War Mammoth can be used as a Chomp Blocker for the Frozen Shade. A disenchant here on Juggernaut would be ideal. I am attacking here. Yes, I'm attacking with the worm. He's actually taking the damage, so he's going to go to 12. Does that mean that next turn I'm toast? I mean, I, I kind of feel forced to, to, to block the Frozen Shade, because he can make it so big. And that means I'll take 5 damage from the Juggernaut. Counting it now, maybe he's got a Drain Life in hand as well. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 Swamps. Look at that. Blocking the Juggernaut. Now he can deal so much damage. Oh, look at that. Dropping to 5. Okay, dropping to 6 instead. This is painful. Gaining two more life because he wants to use the soul net. Keeping one swamp, of course, at bay because of that um, rod of ruin that I have. But this is a huge problem. I'm on six. If he can find a drain life, I'm dead. But first things first. Attacking here. Okay, so I guess I've got another blocker in hand. Tapping six. Okay, there we see the clockwork beast. We saw the clockwork beast already in my opening hand. Getting my counters on the Clockwork Beast, that's half of the fun. Those glass beads. Look at that, putting seven beautiful ones on my beautiful Clockwork Beast. And now I'm just going to tap. Or, sorry, use it as a chum blocker. <laughs> it's going to die. Doesn't matter. What an interesting game this is. It's been dominated by this Frozen Shade. I've lost three War Mammoths. Oh, and a wall of swords to that one frozen shade. And now I'm also going to lose my clockwork beast to that one frozen shade. And every time Yoop is gaining a life in the process because of the soul net. <sighs> life. But on the bright side, I'm still alive. If he cannot do anything against a crawl worm, I can swing in for six. Maybe I've got a giant growth and I can actually kill him. So I'm really hoping for a giant growth here. That would be really sweet. Untapping here. If I have a Giant Grove, so he's going to go to three. Giant Grove! I'm winning this! Woohoo! Oh, this is so sweet. Oh, look at that. He had a Dark Ritual in hand and a creature he could have played as a Chum Blocker. Oh, man. This is lucky that I had that Giant Grove and, of course, that my opponent couldn't find a single Terror. Because remember, he is playing with four Terrors, I believe, or three or something. So... Wow. Anyway, uh, we're going to shuffle up. We don't have any sideboards, so that doesn't really matter. And we're going to continue with game number two.
Game number two, here we go. So setting up all the dice. Wow, that kind of felt like a stolen victory. And ooh, he's got to take a mulligan. And it's a free mulligan actually with the unsleeved. If you've got only lands or no lands, you can just take a free mulligan. Here's my opener. Okay, interesting, four lands, but very big beasts. Do have a disenchant there. So we saw a crawl worm and a clockwork beast. Uh, both creatures costing six to cast. So that's gonna take a while for me. So hopefully I can find some cheaper creatures. I do have a lot in the deck. Remember, I've got four Vanalish heroes. I've got Pegasuses as well. So they're kind of cheaper to cast. And uh, let's see if my brother can keep this hand here. Looks like he wants to... I only see one swamp, I think, in the hand. Maybe he's going to show it to us. Yeah, I think he's going to show it now. Just to clarify, when we showed our hands, obviously we were both not looking at the screen, so we can see each other's hands. That makes sense. So starting off here with a Dark Ritual turn one. Is there a hippie? No, there is the Bog Imp. Took me a moment there to realize what it is. Beautiful card Bog Imp, by the way. You can tap it, and then you can force a creature of the opponent to attack. It has to attack that turn. It works really well with... Um, uh, Sangir Vampire, you also saw it in the past with Royal Assassin. Both of these cards are not in the deck of my brother though. So I'm playing a Pegasus here. So 1-1 one, one Flyer Bander. There we see another Dark Ritual and a Drain Life taking care of my Pegasus. But my brother's got mana issues here. Kept a, a hand with just one Swamp, didn't want to go for a Mulligan. And he did have two Dark Rituals. There is a Wall of Brambles, 2-3 Wall and 1 Green, you can regenerate it. So this is going to work very well against the uh, the Netling Imp. There is a Drudge Skeleton, a 1-1 one, one with Regeneration. And at least my brother has found another land, so that's good news. I'm also finding enough lands here, four in total and just passing turn. Remember, I still have that Clockwork Beast and Crawworm in my hand. Ooh, there's the Frozen Shade again. The Shade that was so uh, had such a big role in game number one. Five lands, so I just want to get to six lands, play out my crawl worm, you know, and try to win it from there. So there's the attack. Obviously, I'm going to block the frozen shade and give it a regeneration shield and taking a damage from the drudge skeleton. And I take it my turn now. There is land number six. Am I going to play out my crawl worm or my clockwork beast? Playing out my Clockwork Beast first. That is big. So it's 7-4. I guess I'm not getting my counters out. Yeah, there we've got the counters. The most fun part of casting the beast. 7 power. Only Force of Nature is bigger in Revised. Being an 8-8 Trampler. And then of course you've got cards like Lord of the Pit, 7-7 seven, seven Flyer. Also really huge. There's a Juggernaut, by the way, on the side of Yoop. And now he's forcing me to attack with the Clockwork Beast. So attacking with the Beast. He's actually taking the damage. He's going to drop to 14. Oh, he's got no mana, of course. Or else he could have blocked it on the Drudge and regenerated it. And what am I going to do now? It looks like I'm going to play a Crawl Worm. Playing out the Crawl Worm here. Remember, I cannot block the Juggernaut with Wall of Brambles because Juggernaut cannot be blocked by Wall, so that's a bit of a problem for me, but I'm still in 17. Could take a hit of 5. I don't think I want to trade the Crawl Worm here for, um, for the Juggernaut. I don't think I want to do that. Anyway, 3 cards in hand. And let's see what my brother can do here. So he's going to untap. He's got to attack with the Juggernaut, so I think, remember, it cannot block on the Wall of Brambles. Ooh, first stepping two. Are we going to see a Terror? Ah, oh, there's a Terror on the Crawl Worm. Yeah, I felt kind of lucky not seeing a single Terror in, in Game 1. So now I'm going to take 5 points of damage, because it cannot be blocked by the Wall of Brambles. So I'm going to go to 12. Hmm, that's not great. And my Clockwork Beast is now a 6-4, because every time it attacks or blocks, it loses a counter. Tapping four, what do I have? Okay, a Conservator. <laughs> that is interesting. I can tap my Conservator, two and tap, to prevent 
the loss of two life, so it kind of stops the bleeding a little bit, attacking again with the Clockwork Beast. And there, of course, uh, Yub can now block it with the uh, Dredge Skeleton, using uh, changing my mana a little bit, by the way, making sure I've got a white open, because I think I still have the Disenchant in hand. But I'm waiting till the, till the last moment to cast a Disenchant. So now he's going to attack with Juggernaut. Now I'm probably going to cast Disenchant. So there's a Disenchant on the Juggernaut. It's a pretty close game thus far. So Yoop on 14, I'm on 12. I mean, he can use he can use a Dredge Skeleton to block the uh, the Clockwork Beast, and he can use his Netly Imp to force me to attack with it, so that it slowly gets smaller. So I got to attack first, again blocking with the Dredge, so it's now a four four. Then I'm gonna play a Mesa Pegasus. Now the problem is for me if I choose to put counters on my Clockwork Beast, my brother can still force me to attack with it, and then it actually dies because it can't attack. So it's a big problem. Here's another Juggernaut, by the way, on the side of Yoop. So it's not looking great for me. Again, I've got to attack. I'm also attacking with the Pegasus. He doesn't have any flyers. And now he's also taking damage from the Clockwork Beast because he doesn't have the mana open to regenerate after playing the uh, the Juggernaut. Okay, this is a good creature, a Thicket Basilisk, 2-4. And uh, it reads, when it gets blocked or blocks, the creatures that it gets blocked by or, or is blocking it with, they actually die at the end of turn. So it's kind of death touch, but the thicket doesn't have to deal any damage. And sometimes that could be relevant. Look at this fear on Juggernaut and erase that on the other Juggernaut. It's looking so bad for me here. And fear means it can only be blocked by artifact creatures or by black creatures. Ah, oh, this is such a big problem. Because the only artifact creature I have is the Clockwork Beast. And of course, my brother is going to keep forcing me to attack with it. So now I'm just attacking with everything. Now, just to clarify, I'm not attacking in a band. So it's blocking on the Drudge, regenerating it. Look at my Clockwork Beast. It's just a 2-4 now, taking 3 points of damage. I mean, he's on 7. He's pretty low. But I'm also pretty low. It's happening a lot, it seems. What am I going to cast here? There's a stream of life. Okay, this is really good news. Stream of life for six. So I'm going to go up to uh, 13, I believe. That is really good. That's going to buy me some time at least. There's another juggernaut. He's going to attack with his juggernaut. He's, I'm going to take five. I'm going to drop from 13 to eight. Man, this is an exciting match. He's on seven. I mean, I've got two Juggernauts coming at me next turn. One of them is unblockable. Attacking with both nonetheless. Really not caring about anything. There's the tap. There's the... So he's going to take th two points of damage, I guess. Ooh, look at that. Playing a Hurricane. Am I winning this? With the Hurricane? I think I am. <laughs> Oh, 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 wow. I didn't see this coming. I really didn't see this coming. I thought it was toast. I thought it was toast. What an escape. So winning twice uh, with a huge, huge escape. Um, I kind of felt duped that you should have won both of these games. Anyway, it was a lot of fun to play. Also, a shout out to the uh, Vendetta Thank you, Robert, for having us coming over and, and playing at your LGS. It's always a lot of fun. And um, if you're ever in Hilversum, make sure to visit the Vendetta. It's a, it's a great place to play. And uh, say hi from me to Robert. He is the owner. Anyway, this is uh, the game for today. I hope you've enjoyed both of our decks. I'll just put them on the screen here. I, I personally think they're just beautiful to look at. I love playing with these cards. They really take me back to my uh, to my childhood when I was young and when I started playing uh, Magic the Gathering. For now, thank you very much for watching. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward. And just in case you're new here to Timmy Talks, welcome to the show. Um, before you go, I'd like to ask you to subscribe if you like the channel, of course, and to ring that bell. All these things really help Timmy Talks move forward. And if you want to be part of Timmy Talks and if you want to support what I'm doing, the, the channel I'm building up here, 
please consider becoming a patron. It already starts with just $1 a month. And the cool thing is when you are a patron, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, the Timmy Talks events. We can even make an episode together if you want. And last but not least, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll of every single episode. What end scroll? This end scroll. Let's take a look at the fantastic, the wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Thank you to Samba Kazi.